Yeah, so uh, just a few words about myself. I'm originally an economist, but I've been working in this space for like um, four years, or soon four years. And um, I do a few things. One of them is that I started this podcast called Epicenter, which we've been doing for many, uh, many years now. We've had the Evan on as well, for example. So we've done about 170 episodes and we're closing pretty close to a million downloads now. And then um, I was, as before, I mentioned uh, on a company called Monax, which is actually also based or building on Tendermint. And then I run a meetup a little bit like this, although not quite as professional. Um, in Berlin, and um, and yeah, and then I joined uh, Tendermint and Cosmos, and I'll speak a little bit about how the two projects relate um, in in January, about two months ago. So, to give a little bit of context, right? So, if you look at these beautiful computers, this is what computers used to look like in the 90s, I guess, early 90s. They were sad and lonely, and they couldn't talk with each other. And then the internet came, and of course, it made possible all those amazing innovations. Uh, and blockchains are a little bit like that too today, right? So we have these different blockchains, and as Evan pointed out, right, they don't really talk with each other. And, uh, and once upon a time, when I first got into this whole area, right, yeah, there was this notion still, okay, everything is going to run on Bitcoin, or everything is, or the, you know, the Ripple guys, everything is going to run on Ripple, or et cetera. And uh, I think it's quite obvious at this point that that's not going to happen, right? So we have a variety of public blockchains and new ones are, going to are being created constantly. We also have permissioned enterprise blockchains and they have their own control requirements. And what's needed is some way for those to speak with each other in some ways, also for assets. I think that's a very crucial thing for assets to move around between blockchains and to be able to sort of leave their home and go somewhere else. Um, and this is what Cosmos is trying to make, uh, to make happen, to create an internet of blockchains. So before uh, Tendermint was mentioned, and I just want to give a little bit of background about that because Cosmos is based on Tendermint. I'm officially working for Tendermint uh, or company Tendermint. So uh, Tendermint has been around for around two and a half years. And But with Tendermint, the idea was really okay. We see proof of work. It is has all kinds of issues, right? It's slow, it's expensive, energy consuming. And and then Tendermint uh, went back, you know, Jay, uh, the founder of that, went back and looked at the literature and ended up building an implementation of uh, something called PBFT, uh, practical Byzantine fault tolerance. And um, it's a quite simple consensus algorithm, um, but it's quite powerful. So, um, for example, with around 100 validators, you can have block times maybe about three seconds or even less, uh, you know, distributed all over the world. Uh, there's also finality, so when a block is created, you can rely that that block is, is the valid block. There are no you know, you don't have to wait for six confirmations or something like that. There's quite a lot of throughput, so one can do thousands of transactions. And that generally means that the bottleneck becomes the application on top rather than, you know, how many transactions can you process. Um, you can tolerate uh, malicious actors up to a certain extent. And um, and when a fork happens, you know, you can, you can punish and slash them. Uh, so that's a sort of the security deposit idea, similar to what they're working on with Ethereum, with Casper. Um, and yeah, so Tendermint um, is, is used primarily at this point in the enterprise chain context. So Eris is based on that. Uh, the Parity team has also implemented Tendermint in their clients so that if you want to use uh, it, um, Ethereum in an enterprise context, you can do that. Actually, there's a whole variety of, um, of projects doing that now. Uh, so here's some of the kind of variety of companies building in one way and another on Tendermint or on something that's building on, on Tendermint. Um, yeah, so this is a, 
And, um, and yeah, so talking about Cosmos, what is Cosmos going to look like? What's the basic idea of Cosmos? So the basic idea of Cosmos is that Cosmos is going to be a network of blockchains. And, and I would say there's kind of two classes of blockchains in, um, or maybe three, maybe three classes of blockchains in Cosmos. Well, first of all, you have the traditional blockchains, right? Look, let's say something like Bitcoin and Ethereum that has, they have their own rules, you know, maybe proof of work or something like that. And, um, you know, their own governance. And then one has the, the Cosmos uh, zones, what we call them, which are essentially uh, blockchains that function uh, with a consensus algorithm like Tendermint or something similar to Tendermint. And with those, we have, you know, there's a lot of connectivity and speed and excellent connection possible. And then what you also need is you need to have some kind of connections between the two. And that's actually qu quite a tricky thing. Uh, so that's why there's going to be a peg zones where essentially uh, a bunch of validators are running full nodes of something like Bitcoin. And they're also running... Um, a tendermint at the same time or something like tendermint so that they can essentially relay messages. And now the idea of Cosmos is that you can take assets from let's say something like Bitcoin and that you'd be able to move it for example over to Ethereum so that you could pay for smart contracts with Bitcoin. And um, that you could do that in a trustless way. So we have essentially a network of different blockchains that are connected. Those blockchains can have their own governance, their own rules of you know, how decisions are made, their own stakeholders. Uh, and then we have a communication protocol that's, um, that's basically uh, about how the, the blockchains verify each other. And the idea of Cosmos is that each blockchain is a light client of the other blockchain. And the Cosmos Hub, which is uh, one of the, the main components that we will build, is going to be a light client of sort of a decentral custodian. And it's going to be a light client of many different blockchains. And it will keep track of, uh, of coin balances of different blockchains. So when we, when we look at you know, what, what is Cosmos going to be in its inception, like what kind of things are, are, are we going to build? Well, there's the Cosmos Hub is one of them. Uh, which is this um, yeah, light client blockchain connected to lots of different ones. Then we would also be building something called the Cosmos Dex, which is a decentralized exchange, so that if you can move Bitcoin and Ether, etc., onto the Cosmos, then you can exchange them uh, for each other without having to go through an intermediary so that one will be able to actually build a high-performing exchange uh, that has decentralized uh, custodianship. Uh, and then there would also be pegs built to so Bitcoin and Ethereum, most importantly. And, um, and, yeah. and uh, of course, the, the communication protocol is also a, a key part of, of making that happen. Um, yeah, so when you look at the Cosmos Hub, right, I would say that the most interesting use case for Cosmos is this idea of connecting different existing blockchains with each other. Um, but there's other ones as well. In particular, um, it can also be thought of as a sort of scalability solution. So you could have different, let's say, different Ethereum virtual machines that are running on their own chains that are connected with each other. Um, so that's kind of a, it's also a potential thing. And then that's also something we're going to build. There is already, uh, I mean, actually, there's quite a lot of different companies are building EVMs on top of Tendermint. So as there's Ares, there's uh, the Ethcore parody team. And then there's also one by Tendermint called Ethermint, which is uh, yeah, EVM on top of Tendermint. So that will also be one zone supported so that one can take, um, you know, Ethereum style smart contract, um, in Solidity and directly deploy them on that. Um, yeah, then so we have the Cosmos Decks. Now, uh, talking a little bit about, you know, what's... So Tenement so far has been used mainly in kind of permission context. It was uh, initially designed as a proof of stake. Um, 
blockchain. That being said, today it hasn't actually been used uh, in a public context yet. So uh, part of Cosmos is uh, maturing Tendermint to be ready for that. And when it's going to be used in this public chain context, then there's also going to be, of course, a staking token, right, for proof of stake. So this, this staking token is called Atom, and uh, essentially will be used, right, so that uh, in initially there will be 100 validators, and then the 100 top Atom holders would be validators, or one would be able to delegate uh, one's coins to somebody else so that they can validate. And there will be... Um, uh, yeah, they will be putting up essentially a security deposit so that they can be uh, punished and slashed if there's any malfeasance or if they, in, in particular if they double sign, right? If they sign uh, different blocks at the same height. Um, another thing that uh, Adam holders uh, stakeholders are going to do is participate in governance. So many decisions uh, or features or network parameters. It's very hard to know what are the right choices. We don't know. So, uh, of course, initially one will have to set some values, but afterwards there will be built-in governance so that one will be able to vote on protocol changes and upgrades. And, uh, and the Atom holders will also you know, receive uh, transaction fees from, from any transactions taking place on the, on the Cosmos network, or at least on, on the chains that they... Uh, our stakeholders for. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that is also a, a, an important thing that we will be focusing on is, is this idea of decentralized governance, how we get people engaged. I think build, building UI and UX, actually what we saw with Wings before is you know, some of those same things we, we, will, uh, we will need so to, to get people engaged and to get people really involved in these decisions. If we recall the incident when Ethereum forked, I think only about 6% of Ether holders in the end ended up casting a vote whether they wanted a fork uh, and uh, a revert or not, right? So there was only a small percentage uh, of people actually involved in those decisions. And I think a big, a big success factor for projects like Cosmos will be to get a much bigger percentage involved. But fortunately, it's Cosmos is just one project, and I've seen guns, a lot of projects, you know, Wings, Tezos, and many others, that are also focusing on getting governance right. Um, and there, of course, will also be, you know, constitution and uh, where is it will actually be kind of written agreement about, okay, what is the purpose of this chain? How is it going to work? Um, yeah, and uh, one last thing to talk about. Um, so we are, we have launched a foundation called the Interchain Foundation. Now, the Interchain Foundation is, you know, initially it was supposed to be just about uh, Cosmos, and then it has evolved a bit since then, and it has taken on a much larger um, vision and a much larger role. And in particular, the idea of the Interchain Foundation is to fund, um, develop um, technology to, to realize this Internet of Blockchain vision in general, so beyond Cosmos. And in particular, the, the other projects that, that we are working with and that is, is part of the Interchain Foundation is uh, Polkadot. So some may have heard of Polkadot. It is, um, it's a, there's a white paper which was written by Gavin Wood, who is uh, the CTO and uh, one of the main people at Ethereum. And, uh, and so both Polkadot and Cosmos are going to be developed by uh, the Interchain Foundation. And just a few words on Polkadot because some people... Um, maybe like what's the difference, how is it? Uh, so with Polkadot essentially one has one security basis, right? one set of validators that are kind of running a whole set of b different blockchains at the same time and, uh, and Polkadot will make it possible that they can call, function call each other and, and they can be of different types of blockchains too but it will be one underlying set of uh, sort of governance running a bunch of parallel blockchains. So that's, it's quite a different but complementary approach to, to Cosmos where the idea is very much about connecting different sovereign blockchains that have their own rules, their own uh, validators. Um, so, so Cosmos, I, I think of it uh, primarily as an interoperability solution and Polkadot is primarily a smart contract scaling solution. Although 
that being said, you know, there's a little bit, both can be used for both. So that's, that is the Interchain Foundation. It is also possible that other projects will uh, also join that. Um, and yeah, and then we, we are also gonna be doing a fundraiser soon as, as part of this Interchain Foundation. Although probably Polkadot is gonna do a little fundraiser even before us. Um, Polkadot is gonna be doing um, a smaller thing as, as they're still kind of doing a POC before they're gonna do the proper launch. Um, but that is still gonna come pretty soon, so please uh, you know, look out for that. And you can, uh, we have an email newsletter as well on cosmos.network, which you can check out, or check out Tendermint as well. So thanks so much. So thank you very much, Brian. Um, are, there, are there now any questions? Yeah. Okay. Great. Here you go. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for the talk. Um, I wonder about the similarities and differences between Interledger and Cosmos, because they both allow <laughs> yeah, interoperability between different blockchains. Yeah, I was, I was kind of afraid of that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm, 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 uh, I'm extremely scared that I'm going to get this wrong and everyone's going to get angry at me. Uh, Good luck. So. Sure, right? I mean, uh, so first of all, um, uh, my understanding at least is that Cosmos is, uh, or the IBC is specifically focused on uh, blockchain, blockchain interoperability. So it's very powerful in that context, but it's not as general as Interledger, right? Interledger is also a lot of focus on connecting with more general ledgers and um, uh, bank ledgers and stuff, right? Um, you know, there are some some advantages. I f I, my understanding is right of Cosmos is that you can, if, if one wants to do a transfer, a token transfer between different blockchains, you know, this is really, it is the blockchains themselves taking care of that, the validators of the blockchains, not me as a sender or you as a recipient. So, you know, you don't have to be online for that, for example, so. Uh, and the blockchains keep track of the state of the other blockchains. So um, actually I saw somewhere mentioned that one could even think of the Cosmos Hub a little bit like a connector in, um, in Interledge. I'm not sure if that makes sense. So, so you would say there's more logic stored on the blockchain to allow the process to happen? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that um, Cosmos is m it's m more tightly interconnected blockchains that will allow, you know, high volumes of Bitcoins and Ether, for example, moving between each other. Um, and it's, of course, you know, it's really building, um, yeah, it's, it's building these, one could always call it highways between blockchains, right? Yeah. Where, uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, maybe you can also come back to that in the panel. Uh. Definitely. Um, any more? Okay, back to the panel. Um, thank you for the... I don't need it. That's all right. I can have two, but uh, no worries. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I think we now have a more clearer understanding of Tenement and Cosmos. Um, really quick recap, as I understand it, I might be wrong, um, changing stuff on Bitcoin, on blo blockchains, values, stuff. Uh, Wait, was that a summary of Cosmos? Yeah, that's or? my summary. <laughs> um, which is a good starting point for the panel discussion. <laughs> um, but really wonderful that you are here tonight. Thank, Thank you very much. Hope to have you another time. And uh, let's discuss it from later on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Thanks so much. Um. <laughs>